time. The two uh, crew members uh, made their way outside of the uh, spacewalking hatch to the pier's airlock. Uh, they uh, installed a protective ring around the hatch and removed a, uh, a tray of experiments called the rest of Razia that had been deployed uh, by the previous Russian spacewalking team uh, back in February of 2016 of Yuri Malenchenko and Sergei Volkov. They are now preparing uh, to uh, retrieve uh, the five nano satellites uh, that will be deployed uh, sequentially. The first by Yurchikin, the last four by Rosansky. The first of those five satellites called the Tomska satellite, an 11 pound satellite uh, that will be manually deployed by Yurchikin. The first uh, satellite uh, to be uh, fully printed uh, through 3D technology. And then, regardless of uh, what those indicators do, uh, we will launch it. Okay. These uh, satellites uh, will be deployed uh, to the aft and nadir of the pier's docking compartment on a trajectory that will guarantee that there's no chance of recontact with the International Space Station during their lifetime. Each of the satellites expected to spend about five or six months in orbit. The cover and detach the safety tether from it. One is blinking and the other one is not doing anything at all. Did you power cycle it? Not yet. In work. So you'll remove the uh, cover, uh, look at the LEDs, and then go ahead and jettison. Cup. Yeah, practice a couple of times, maybe three. Uh, uh, your motions as to where and how you're going to be jettisoning it. Okay, so one LED is on, uh, the other one's not. Just one copy. Sergey, are you ready to monitor? And we'd like to use the cameras to record. This is the view from uh, Fyodor Yurchikin's helmet camera. He's got in his hand the Tomska satellite. Sergey, are you ready? And there it goes. Copy. Jettison. And it's moving along the axis along the right trajectory, and it's um, more than 10 below. All right, let's watch its motion as it moves away another 10 seconds and then go to the next one. That was the uh, Tomska satellite, the first of the five nano satellites being manually deployed by Yurchikin and uh, Rosansky. It was uh, Yurchikin who uh, manually cast this satellite, the first satellite developed with the help of 3D printing. The next uh, pair of satellites will be deployed by Sergei Rosansky. Those uh, two satellites are called uh, Tanusha satellites. Two small Russian experimental satellites uh, developed by the Southwestern State University in Kursk, Russia. These uh, two satellites uh, will be uh, commemorating the upcoming 60th anniversary of the launching of uh, the first Sputnik satellite to inaugurate uh, the era of spaceflight on October 4th, 1957, and uh, the 160th birthday of Konstantin Sholkovsky, who is the uh, 
father of Russian astronautics and spaceflight, born on September 17, 1857. The two Tanusha satellites each weigh 10 pounds apiece and measure 12.2 by 6 by 6 inches. Try to find the best body position and then practice a few times the motion and then a jettison. And when you turn it on, um, make sure that the right LED is on. The uh, Tomska satellite uh, was deployed at 10.10 a.m. Central Time, 11.10 a.m. Eastern Time, again by Fyodor Yurchik. And each one of these satellite deployments are going aft and nadir of the uh, Piers docking compartment to ensure that they uh, will never be in a position to recontact the international outpost. I probably need to take out the, set, the second Tanusha and set it up. And you got the cover? Yes, it's attached to my safety tether. And you you will be jettisoning and I'll be watching, right, Sergey? And Moscow, I'm ready. Maybe you can uh, remove the cover from the second tenusha? I thought uh, we agreed that you would be doing that. Nah, you can do it, Sergey. I uh, will pass it on to you on the hook, and you will need to detach the hook from it. Give me two seconds, Sergey. Is there back to back? And what's the difference between the satellite? The maximum time of separation between the two satellites is um, 10 minutes, but um, the earlier you send the, the second Tanusha to chase the first Tanusha would be better. Copy. All right, so it's attached to the safety tether. We see that, Fedor. And Sergey, I'm ready to give it to you. No choice. Fedor, got it. Sergey and Fedor, are you ready? Yes, we are. Launch. Jettison. And there goes uh, the first of the two Tanusha satellites uh, deployed manually by uh, Sergei Rozansky. The, is on. the, the uh, trajectory operations officer, our ballistics officer here in Mission Control, reports a good trajectory as it goes uh, away aft and nadir from the Piers docking compartment. Again, this is the first of two satellites commemorating a pair of significant uh, anniversaries, the 60th anniversary of the launching of the first Sputnik satellite on October 4th. 1957, the 160th birthday of Konstantin Sholkovsky, the father of Russian astronautics. That uh, satellite deployment came at 10.15 a.m. Central Time. Yeah, we're trying the second of these two Tanusha satellites uh, coming up shortly by Rosansky. They just hit, hit our fingers, and that's what sends them spinning. Are you ready to just listen? We are. Go. Yeah. Nope. And there goes the second Tanusha satellite at 10.16 a.m. Central Time. So three out of the five uh, satellites have been deployed now. The other two coming up uh, within the next couple of minutes. Copy. So let's uh, prepare TNS. Uh, we're going to watch second. This is a view. Uh, you can see uh, the glittering uh, spin of the uh, second of the two Tanusha satellites as it uh, drifts away 
uh, from the International Space Station right behind the Soyuz MSO-5 vehicle that is attached to the Rosviet module at the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, which is currently flying 252 miles above the Earth, about to approach uh, the west coast of Central America. Sergey, you have the 10 Earth. The uh, next satellite, the fourth in the series of nano satellites that uh, Rosansky will deploy is uh, the TNS-0 satellite. This is a satellite that uh, was uh, created to test technologies for the creation of new space telecommunication and navigation systems. This uh, TNS-0 satellite weighs 10 and a half pounds. There should be a more than one. It is a cylindrical uh, satellite that is uh, 23 inches in length seven inches in width. You need to pull out and rotate the lever. I meant the housing, not the lever. So we'll turn it on and jettison it right away, correct? Yes, yeah, so set it up, then power it up, and send it up. Okay. And, uh, Sergey, you can give me uh, that feather that's holding all these covers so that they don't get in, in your way. Sergey, no rush. Take your time. Okay. So I'm taking it out of the housing. So they go ahead and take it. And uh, Sergey, again, uh, select the best body position, power up, and jettison. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Can you please um, take away the covers? So there, let's get uh, ready for jettison. That's what we're doing. This is Sergey, I'm ready. Fyodor, are you ready? Yes, I'm standing here. Activation and jettison, right? Yes, Sergey, please. Activated. And jettison. And the fourth in the series of five nanosatellites now cast away by Sergei Rosansky at 10.21 a.m., this being the TNS-0 satellite. A good deployment, a good trajectory reported by our trajectory operations officer here in Mission Control, and a good view of the TNS-0 satellite. Again, this uh, particular satellite designed to test technologies for the creation of new space telecommunication and navigation systems. This satellite actually will send back uh, signals to communicate uh, via the Global Star system and an additional VHF channel that the Russian flight controllers and Karyov will provide. Sergey, while we're 
waiting. In your LCG, we show 12 degrees. Is it uh, chilly in there? No, because uh, I'm moving around too much, um, and we're in insulation, so when we're not, I'll, I'll turn it up. Okay. So four out of the five satellites have now been deployed, the first uh, by Yurchikin, the last three by Rosansky, and the fifth and final satellite in the sequence of deployments uh, coming up, that being the Zerkalo satellite, part of a Russian experiment to test a high, pre high precision uh, predictions of International Space Station motion by combining uh, navigational measurements of the uh, space station's vector taken by ground stations and receivers of navigational satellite systems. Restrain them in place. Or use the handrail above the Pahawa hatch. Yeah, they keep wanting to come out. Are you holding it? Nope. Okay. It's on the hook. You hold on to it. And now detach the hook. And while you are getting set up, I'm going to rehook it to the handrail. A good view of the uh, Zircalo satellite, a spherical satellite uh, looking uh, not very much different than the first Sputnik satellite that was launched almost 60 years ago. This being 24 pounds uh, in weight, 20.8 inches in width. And I'll stick my head out. Can you remove this a ribbon? Okay. Well, I'm thinking how to set it up better. Guys, uh, we are going to be LOS on KU band, so uh, we only can rely on you, and then we'll see it uh, recorded, so we won't see it live. Okay. What is it next to me? Th those are my feet, Sergey. Let me rehook some of the tether hooks and then I'll get close to you. And I can tell you, Moscow, that um, using these newly designed uh, hooks is awesome. A good view uh, from the helmet camera of Sergei Rozanski in the fourth spacewalk of his career as he uh, holds on for the next few moments at least to the uh, final uh, satellite in the complement of five nano satellites that are being deployed today as the uh, first set of tasks on today's spacewalk, expected to last about six hours in duration, this being the Zarkalo satellite that Rosansky will cast away shortly. 
Ребят, картинка пошла. Guys, we're getting video again, so we are watching you. Copy. Hang on, Sergey, let me get my hands on him. I didn't get one of them. Okay, I'm holding it with one hand. And so am I. Hang on, We're uh, transitioning uh, between tracking and data relay satellites on the Constellation. We should be regaining our television capability just a moment or two from now. This view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Russian flight controllers, of course, uh, running the show today as far as the spacewalk is concerned, while the flight control team here in Houston at uh, Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center working in uh, tandem with the uh, four USOS crew members, Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, Paolo Nespoli, and Randy Bresnik on their daily activities inside, highlighted today by the continuing unloading of uh, vital science samples and other uh, supplies from the Dragon cargo ship that SpaceX successfully delivered to the International Space Station yesterday. Feather, are you ready? Yes. All right, well, we can't see you. Hopefully it will go as smoothly as the previous ones because uh, you've practiced enough. Uh, go ahead and jettison. So there, are you watching? Yes, I am. This one was the best. Well, because it's round, so... And uh, the fifth and final satellite, the Zircalo satellite, away at uh, 1029 a.m. Central Time. All five satellites have now been deployed, and our ballistics officer here in Mission Control reports the trajectory of all five satellites was spot on. Yeah, the only thing you need is to it. Load the, a mustache to it. And it's going to be a face. Now we shaved it before we came out. Can you see us now? Yeah, we saw, we saw it launch. So the next one, I'm not ready yet. Okay, while Fyodor is um, moving things around on the side, uh, maybe you can um, power cycle the camera once again. Yeah, as soon as Fyodor gets all the stuff from me. Fyodor, I put it in, in DC for you to secure inside. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston approaching the one hour mark into the spacewalk today by Fyodor Yurchikin and Sergei Rozanski. The highlight of the spacewalk, the deployment of these five 
uh, small satellites uh, for a variety of scientific and symbolic purposes now complete. All five satellites uh, jettisoned, the first by Yurchikin, the other four by Rosansky in sequential order. The uh, first uh, deployment uh, occurred at 10.10 a.m. Central Time, the last at 10.29 a.m. Central Time. This view now from Sergei Rosansky's helmet camera. The crew uh, will uh, now uh, take a witness plate uh, for an experiment called IMPACT uh, that will be installed near a thruster tray on the uh, large diameter, as it is called, the rear section of the Zvezda service module to collect uh, samples of uh, micrometeoroid uh, debris hits and other uh, residue deposits on the exterior surface of the Zvezda service module over the course of the next couple of years. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So, Sergey, well, wrap it up with this first camera. We can take it into the crew lock, back into the crew lock, and that'll be the end of the story. All right, let's take it in, and I'll help you out with the GoPro. Okay. A good view uh, of Fyodor Yurchikin, the veteran cosmonaut, inside the hatchway to the pier's docking compartment. Yurchikin uh, is in the ninth spacewalk of his career. He entered uh, today's uh, EA with 51 hours and 54 minutes of spacewalking time. A little bit below. When he uh, returns to Earth on September 3rd with Peggy Whitson and Jack Fisher, your chicken will have logged 673 days in space on his five missions, good for seventh place on the all-time endurance list. Whitson not far behind. She will land with 666 days to her credit. That'll put her just seven days behind your chicken in eighth place on the all-time endurance list. Camera, that would be highly desirable. Uh, all right. We'll put it on work. And if you have a spare minute, could you please unpower it? So shut down the recording and the power for the second camera. Come again? I, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with the first one still. Well, deal with it first, and then I'll tell you about the second camera. All right, the camp is on. And hand it over to Fyodor once he's ready. I am ready. I'll take this one. You have it. And the hook. And I'll give you the second one. Okay. You ready? Ready. Let it go. It's free now. And I'm ready for the second camera. Well, well how are you going to transfer it? Well, maybe with a kit. But it's up to you. I can connect it to myself. or to the kit, or crew lock bag, or somewhere else. Well, let's try and attach it to the handrail and uh, keep it running so that 